Okay guys, really quickly, before we even get started with the video, full transparency, my goal on this channel is to be completely transparent with you guys with everything that happens. My channel is not yet monetized, okay? I'm still working with the AdSense stuff and trying to figure all that stuff out. Um, but for now, enjoy every single one of my videos, ad-free. This is like your <laughs> Netflix 30-day uh, uh, whatever that you don't have to pay. Um, also, <sighs> fudgesicle sticks. Also... I don't want to do any videos unless there's substance behind it, meaning behind it, and and there's a reason for it, okay? I'm never going to clickbait you guys, okay? Also, this video in particular is going to be super long, okay? Fair warning, it's going to be a, the longest video I've ever done because I'm going to break down the hold and, and, and how I figured out how to do it and three cautionary tales. So stay tuned, grab a coffee, hang out with a homeboy or a homegirl and just play this all the way through because... If you don't, you're not going to get the full spectrum of what I'm trying to tell you guys. Long video, sit down, get comfy. What's up, guys? Proto Doge here. Check it out. Today, we're going to be talking about the art of the hold, okay? And I feel like this is the perfect time to talk about this because Doji Doge is getting a little bit on the Logy Loge today. So, you know, we got to make sure we, we, we keep diamond handing, okay? So, I'm going to share with you guys three cautionary tales when it comes to folding under pressure and it comes to paper handing like a paper handed pansy okay so we're gonna get into that in two seconds right before we jump into that let's do this real quick because this is getting crazy so there are spam spam comments and stuff in my comment section and some of you guys are falling for it telling me hey man i sent you whatsapp message i'm never going to ask you for whatsapp never I don't even text like this. I don't even write messages like this. My replies never look like this. You guys want to know what my replies look like? They look like this. I got a thousand emojis. So if you hear a reply and it's like, hey, thank you so much for your comment. Uh, please uh, send me a WhatsApp so I can help you out and invest money. No, that's not me. Instead, mine is going to be like, let's go. And I'm going to have like 30 rocket ships. Okay, then you know it's me. Back to the video. Another thing I want to address my dms look guys i'm here for y'all i can't tell you guys that i'm for the people and not be for the people so i will try my very best to reply to every single one of my dms every single day i take time out i take three to four hours every night that i go into my dms and i make sure i respond to every single person if you have a question if you are unsure about doge if you're feeling a little paper handy ish you know what i mean if you uh had a bad day whatever like i'm there i'm messaging back and forth i'm talking to you guys i just want to know you guys have anything you can always reach out to me the best way to contact me is on my dms proto doge dms the doge coin millionaire that's more of my business side so i'm not on there as much but i am on my pro the doge uh instagram okay so go follow me if you haven't shoot me a dm i will respond and my twitter too my twitter's been going crazy lately so follow me on twitter if you haven't but yeah i'm also do a whole nother video about the merchandise stuff i got a whole idea for merch i want to involve the community i want to i want you guys to have uh have a say in what the merch becomes i want to do contests all that stuff that's going to be a whole nother video okay if you tuned into this video we're going to get right to it and the meat of this video is how to hold how do i stomach drops for example today i just checked my robin hood i'm down two hundred fifty thousand dollars today just about okay and at the end of the video i'm gonna share my portfolio but three cautionary tales don't double dutch the doge number one we're going back in time okay 2019 is when i started investing in, in in stocks okay my very first stock you guys may know this and you may not my very first stock is tesla i bought tesla spring of 2019 and it was around the time that tesla was going downhill okay it was about 250 dollars per share at that time and it had hit highs of 300 above 300 like a year before something like that okay so in 2019 it was on a decline it hit 250 for the first time in a while then it hit 240 for the first time in a while 
And everybody on the news, all the experts, all the experts on the news, they were all saying, you know, Tesla's going to zero. Tesla's going to fail. The interest in electric cars is fading. Like, nobody wants electric cars anymore. We love gas guzzlers. I don't know what the heck they were thinking, but that's not true. I didn't believe it. I saw this on TV. I'm like, you guys are wrong. So I did some research, did my Googles, my Googly Googles. And, um, and I figured, you know what? This is the future. And even though it's low, I'm going to invest. I'll start pouring money in a Tesla, pouring money in a Tesla. I didn't know it at the time, but I kind of went all in on Tesla. Okay. So every little bit of extra money I had, Tesla stock, Tesla stock, Tesla stock, Tesla stock. Okay. So at the time, this was the first time I was able to save up a few thousand dollars. Okay. And I was working my regular job at this point in time in 2018, I made 36 K, um, that year, 36 K. 2019, I made 45K. 2020, I made 60K. So a lot of you guys don't know this. Last year was the first year I made $60,000 in a year, okay? Um, At this job. So back to 2019. I'm getting excited because I'm putting money into Tesla and I'm seeing it go up, right? So let's say, let's say it goes, let's say the stock is at like, $230, $230, right? And it jumps up to like $240 and I had put a few thousand in, I'm going to jump up some, right? So let's just say um, the stock jumps up a good amount and I made a thousand bucks, okay? I'm like, oh snap, I just made a thousand bucks. It takes me like two weeks to make a thousand bucks at work. Sell, sell, mm, paper hand, mm, paper hand. And guess what? I lock in, lock in my profit, right? My thousand dollars. And then I have it and then I get it. And then I'm good. I'm like, yay, I got my thousand dollar profit. Now what? What am I, am I going to put in the bank and let it collect dust? That was the whole point of investing was to not put it in the bank, right? So I got to put it right back in the stock, right? With the extra thousand dollars that I got, right? So I do that. Next day happens. Next day comes along. I check and let's say there's a terrible earnings call and it drops down, right? I lose a thousand bucks and I'm like, oh man, I just made a thousand bucks and I lost a thousand bucks. That's what I'm saying when I say don't double dutch the doge. Don't try to scalp. People keep telling you that, oh, lock in profits, lock. You lock in profits when you don't believe in a stock. You lock in profits when you don't believe in a coin. That's what you do because you're not sure you don't believe in it, right? So you lock it in just in case, just in case. Plan B, if I ever lived my life with a plan B, I would have never been where I'm at today. You can't live life with a plan B. You have to go after what you want and you do it to the best of your ability. Whatever happens, happens. But you do the best that you can. In any case, back to the story. So this is true factual information. The first time it happened to me was an earnings call. I thought, I thought Tesla did great. So I kept all my money in, however many I have. I don't remember how much money I had in it. It was a few thousand dollars, okay? Kept all my money in it, right? Earnings call comes along. We fell short. Tesla fell short of production. It drops down. I lose, it drops down from like maybe 250 to like 230 or something. I lose like whatever amount of money was in there and I'm and I'm mad. I'm, I'm so upset. I'm like, oh man, I just lost a bunch of money. Oh, I should have took it out. And then during the earnings call, I should have waited for that and then put the money in. Oh, I'm so dumb. Oh, right. So what happens? I'm like, okay, I learned my lesson. I said, next time I'm going to take it out. Right. So then the next earning call comes along. Right. And I'm like, all right, last time I kept the money in. So this time we might, we might not hit it. So let me take the money out. Right. And and then wait till after the earnings call and then I put my money in. Right. So what do I do? Second earnings call comes along and I take all my money out right before. Right. Cause I'm like, it's going to drop. Guess what it does. It goes from $250 a stock to 300. It just shoots up. Because we killed it and I didn't think we were going to kill it. So now I'm like, oh, I got FOMO. I'm like, oh, it shot all the way up to 300. Now I got to buy it at 300. I'm going to just wait for a dip. I'm going to just wait for a dip. It was at this moment I knew I fucked up. The dip never dipped. So now I'm like, oh, I'm going to have to buy in at like 280 or 290. I don't want to. Oh, this is terrible. (sighs) So I'm upset. I'm upset. Right? I'm upset. First time, I kept my money in, it dropped, I lost money. Second time, I, I uh, took my money out, it shot up, I missed out on that. Third time, so this is the third time it happened, right? Cybertruck is about to come out. 
Cybertruck, I believe in Tesla. I believe the Cybertruck's gonna be amazing. It might be a radical design, but so what? This is gonna be incredible. And the hype leading up to, the hype leading up here, okay, foreshadowing, the hype leading up to the Cybertruck was just like the hype for 420, was just like the hype with Elon at SNL. Same, same type of hype leading up, right? So it got all the way to $350, right? Right before Cybertruck. And I'm like, this is it. The, like Cybertruck's gonna kill it and we're gonna go to $400 a share and I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a, bun a bunch of money, right? So what do I do? Take all my money, I go all in on Tesla right before the Cybertruck is announced. Put all my money in there. The Cybertruck comes out, and then guess what? The freaking window shattered, and it's a meme, and everybody's making fun of it, and it's all over the internet, and people aren't taking it serious because it couldn't withstand a freaking metal ball, which, like, your car can't either, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? But in any case, it's a laughing stock of the internet, and the, and the shares dropped from $350 to $300, okay? I had all my money in it. I lost a bunch of money. After this happened, I was like, you know what? Oh, screw this, man. This was the equivalent of flipping a coin three times and losing every single time. I keep it in. I'm wrong. I take it out. I'm wrong. I put it back in for a Cybertruck. I'm wrong. Like, like, oh, uh, this is this is just too much. I can't do it. So then, so what do I start doing? I start buying a little bit of Uber. I start buying a little bit of Nikola. I start buying a little bit of Revolve. I start buying a little bit of, uh, you know, other stocks and stuff like that to diversify my portfolio, which is not a bad thing to do. I, I think you should diversify. I'm just a little different, okay? So that happens. And that's when I realize, okay, I got to stop doing this double Dutch thing. I got to stop going in, taking out, trying to predict what's about to happen. You can't do that. The only way that you can guarantee a profit and you can guarantee gains when you invest either in the stock market or in crypto is to hold. You have to hold because time is your friend. The longer the time goes by, that stock is going to rise. It might take dips, go up and down, up and down, up and down, but it's going to go up in the long term. Same thing with crypto, depending on which crypto you have, right? It's going to go up in the long term if you believe in the stock, if you believe in the coin. OK, so that was cautionary tale. Number one, obviously, it has to be a good company with good fundamentals. And the same thing with a coin. It's got to be a good coin, not a poo poo dookie coin. Cautionary tale. Number two, thought I learned my lesson. Right. But we're all flawed as human beings. And, you know, sometimes things go awry. So what do you do? You just have to dust yourself off and try and try again. This happened when I invested all of my money in Dogecoin. OK, so this happened this year. I first sparked my interest in Dogecoin when I found out about it through the Wall Street bets. I was like, you know what? I got 40 bucks. I realized you could buy Dogecoin in Robinhood. I looked at my Robinhood. I got 40 bucks left in my buying power, right? That I could just use. I take the 40 bucks. I put it in a Dogecoin at a penny, right? Just to see what happens, right? It sparked my interest. I just want to see what happens, right? The very next day, it goes from a penny to eight cents. I'm like, oh my God, what the heck is this? This is insane. I've never bought a stock and this happened. So what do I got to do? I'm not missing out the next time this happens. So I got to study. That's when the intense studying like Google searches, looking at graphs, going over the years, understanding the trend, seeing where it's going, uh, you know, understanding the hype around it, understanding that this is going to actually be a long term thing because I believe in memes and the economy and the language of the millennials. And I started coming up with my bullish thesis based on everything that I saw around me. And everything that I have been studying, right? So I tracked it from a penny to eight cents. It dropped down to two cents, right? So from two cents, I tracked it. The, the first night, it stayed at two cents at 0 0.027, 0 0.028 for about five or six hours straight, meaning that I was watching my phone for five or six hours straight and seeing that it wasn't going to go anywhere. This was around, I was up all night. I probably didn't, didn't, didn't like try to sleep a little bit till like 5 a.m. or something, right? So I tracked it. It didn't, it didn't go under two. And I was like, this is the floor. This is the floor. 0 0.027, 0 0.028 is the floor. It's never going to go under that ever again. Next day, go all day. It does whatever it does, right? The behavior of Dogecoin goes all over the place. Then it drops back down. And that night it was at 0 0.033, 0 0.034. Didn't go under that, right? So I'm like, OK, OK, OK. Next day, it goes all the way up, all the way up, does whatever it does, comes back down. Right. I put in half my margin money when it was at 0 0.027, 0 0.028. I put in half of it. I had a theory it was never going to go under that. Next day rolls around. I was right. It never goes under that. And so I'm like, OK, my theory was right. I'm putting the rest of my margin in. I put the rest of my margin in. The next day it goes up again and comes back down around mid uh, three cents. I want to say three and a half cents, three point six cents or whatever. Right. Um. But there was a moment in time during that day 
and I screenshot it. I'm sure I have a, a proof of it. I forgot exactly what time it was. Where it did, for a split second, do a, do a little dive. Where it went under three cents at 0 0.027, 0 0.028, 0 0.029 for a split second. And it bounced right back. On that split second, it was maybe, oh, I say split second, but it was probably like five minutes or something like that, right? What do I do? I'm like, ooh, I could get it at under three cents. That's awesome. I can get it at 0 0.029. That's amazing. Let me do it. What do I do? Sell off all of my margin that I had bought of Dogecoin at 0 .3, 0 0.033 or 0 0.034, somewhere around there. And I bought back in. I sold it all. I bought it back in at 0 0.028 or 0 0.029, right? In that process, I lose $20,000, okay? But I'm like, it's okay, whatever, $20,000. In the long term, long, you know, long haul, it's not going to matter that much, okay? It's fine. Uh, the next day, same thing happens. The pattern, like, that night, it stayed for five or six hours, dead at like a floor at about three, about three and a half cents, three, 3.6 cents or something like that. 0 0.035, 0 0.036, right? Next day rolls around. And I'm like, all right, I feel like I got the hang of this. I'm like, I've been tracking this all week. It's never gone back to one. It's never gone back to two. It's never gone back to three. So like, I'm, I'm like, this is, this is right. So the next day happens, it goes up, right? Dogecoin goes up and it's about five cents around there. I think it hit six maybe for a little bit or something along those lines. But I'm looking at my phone. This is around maybe 2 p.m. or like during the day. I look at my phone, I'm up 25K. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm up 25,000. I lost 20,000 last night. So I can just sell right now everything I got, right? Make that $25,000 profit. Basically get back the 20K from last night and 5,000 on top of it. And then wait until it drops back down that night and stays on the floor. I find the floor and then I'll go all in. That was, those were my intentions, right? Because I know the behavior. I've seen it for the past three, three, four days, right? What happens? Elon tweets. This is the night that Elon tweets. He's got the Simba, the, the, the meme. Oh, well, welcome. You're welcome, Doge. No high, no highs, no lows, only Doge. Uh, he, he does the whole the people's crypto. is the future. He does like a series of maybe eight, me, uh, eight tweets in a row. Back to back to back to back. At this point, I have been telling every soul that I knew to buy Dogecoin. I told everybody that I knew to buy Dogecoin, right? So what is happening? After he tweets that, it shoots up and it goes to like five, six, seven, maybe. You know what I mean? I forgot where, where it went up to, but everybody's calling my phone like, you were right, bro. You were right. Like, like it's going to go up. This is it. This is the rocket ship ride, right? I'm thinking, this is it. I'm going to miss this ship because... I, 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 what I was waiting for from the one cent to the eight cents, that jump, this is what's happening now in my head. I was like, this is what's happening now. I'm missing it. But at the same time, I'm like, this isn't right. This isn't organic. This isn't just the rise on its own. This is because of a tweet that doesn't make sense. It's not how it's supposed to happen. It's just supposed to happen. You know what I mean? Like when it went from a penny to eight cents, it wasn't because of a tweet. You know what I mean? That was just an organic thing. So I'm starting to like freak out a little bit, right? Cause I'm like, Everything that I've thought up until this point was research on graphs and my technical analysis, whatever, right? Everything that I've been, but, but I've been researching on it, plus my bullish thesis on, on the future of meme currency and how Doge is going to be the future, my personal thesis. Now, I had, you know, I had an inkling that Elon liked the coin. He talked about it a bunch of times, but now it seems like he's all in, like not all in, but like. It seems like he's supporting the coin because this is like a back to back to back to back to back thing with the tweets that he had never done before. So that was just the cherry on top was like, oh, and we got Elon. OK, let's go. So this was kind of like my sign of like, all right, I got to go all in. So this was when like, I, you know, obviously I wait for the floor and stuff. You know, I'm buying a little bit, selling a little bit, like panicking a little bit. But I'm like, this is it. This, this is what I've been waiting for. Cause now I'm going to go all in. So that's when I sell all my stocks. When I, when I max out my credit cards, when I borrow money from people, all these things happen. And I put in everything I got into Dogecoin at point at 4.5 cents, 0 0.045, right? That's when that happens. But the cautionary tale is me trying to get that 25 K. If I'd have just chilled there, 
if I just stayed quiet and ate my food, I would have been able to, to, to get in way lower than I got in at. You see what I'm saying? Like I had all of my margin in at, at 0 0.033. Like, I mean, no, no, no. I had all my margin in at 0 0.029. Like I said, I bought back in and I took the 20K L. I should have just took the 20K L. I was trying to be a smart little scalper. You know what I mean? Oh, it's a high. Let me just sell real quick. Wait for the drop. And then I'll buy back at the, at the dip. Do you see what I'm saying? You can't do that. You can't try to scalp. You can't try to like buy low, sell high and, and, and think you know what you're doing. Because sometimes it doesn't dip as low as you think it is. And you think it's going to dip lower. It doesn't. It goes up. Then you got to buy it up here. Then it dips later. Do you see what I'm saying? That's cautionary tale number two. Cautionary tale number three. This is about my friend, not about me. I had been telling him about Doge since I found out about it. We have been going back and forth on phone calls. He discovers something, texts it to me. I discover something, texts it to him. We're both on the Reddit. We're both looking at, 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 at uh, reasons why Doge is good. And then we're both looking at reasons why Doge is bad. Trying to debunk it. He hits me up like, well, hey, what about this, man? What about the unlimited supply? And then I'm like, oh, but it's because it is. And okay, well, what about this? Like, what if, what if it's a pump and dump? And then we search it. We're doing back and forth uh, research on everything, right? I'm so dead set on Doge that every single argument against Doge, I debunk. Same thing with him. And I'm explaining my bullish thesis to him. Like, bro, I think this is the future. Like, I'm drilling this in his head to the point where he's like, bro, this is it. Doge is the one. Let's go. This is it. Let's go all in. I go all in. He goes all in. Okay? Except, obviously, my all in was a lot more than his. He put in about $10,000. Okay? That was, that was all in for him. Those two months go by, right? Where nothing really happens. And Doge is about five cents for two months straight. Doge for a splits, Doge for a little bit went from five cents to nine cents at its highest and went back down to five cents. And I'm like, that's not, that's not it. I'm thinking, I'm thinking the, the penny to eight cents rise is going to be five cents to 15 or five cents to 20. And then it's going to chill up there. That's what I'm thinking, right? Two months goes by, nothing. During this time, all the other coins are going crazy. We got Harmony. We got uh, One or Omni or whatever. We got uh, XRP. We got uh, all these other coins are like going nuts. And then he's looking at it like we're just on the sidelines all in, the, all in on Doge. And all these other coins are going crazy. And he's like, man, oh, I should have got some Harmony. Oh, I should have got some of this coin. I should have got some of that coin. That coin's going crazy. I'm like, damn, man, you're right. Like these, these, all these coins are going nuts. But I still believe in Doge, right? He's got a bunch of cryptocurrency homeboys, okay? And they're telling him Doge is a joke. It's not going to go anywhere. I'm in his ear like, bro, you got to hold fast. Doge is the one. I'm trying to tell you. And he's like, but these guys are like, you know, into the crypto. They've been into crypto for years. They don't know what they're talking about. So basically, this was stuff that I didn't know was happening. This was stuff behind the scenes he told me about later. He was like, man, because one day I remember this is the conversation we had, right? Right before, this was maybe a day or two before, Doge went from $0.05 cents to $0.07. Cents. And I hadn't done that for two months, right? We had a conversation. We're talking about all these other coins going crazy. And I'm like, man, maybe I should have I should have got some XRP. Maybe I should have got some, uh, maybe I shouldn't have gone all in. Maybe I should have got a little bit on XRP. You know, I'm having these doubts too, right? But I'm still 100% in Doge. I'm just talking at this point. He's like, bro, we, like, we should have got in a Harmony, man. We should have got in on these other coins, man. And I'm like, I mean, yeah, but like, bro, Doge, bro, Doge. And he's like, and I remember him saying this vividly, and he'll tell you the same thing. He was like, we're over here waiting on this meme coin, man. We're over here waiting on this meme coin. As soon as he said that, I'm like, I lost him. I lost him. He's, he's, he's out. He's out. So what happens? The next day, or the day after, I remember exactly how, how many days after, but Doge goes from $0.05 cents to $0.07. Cents. What does he do? Cash is out. He sells all his Doge at seven cents. The next day, we're thinking it's gonna go back to five cents. It goes to ten cents. Now he's getting a little uneasy, right? He hits me up like, "Bro, it's cool, man. You know." Oh, guess what he bought? <laughs> Shout out to Andre and uh, Money Millennials. Um, he bought Coinbase. He bought the IPO. So, so he, so, so Doge went to seven cents. He cashed out. And bought Coinbase and lost money. Anyways, at 10 cents, he hits me. He's like, bro, you know, I just got to be okay with it. It's a decision I made. I made a profit. I made a little bit of a profit. I decided to go to Coinbase. I got to live with my decision. It's not that big of a deal. Okay, what happens? 
It doesn't stop at 10 cents. Doge goes to 15 cents. Then it goes to 20 cents. Then it goes to 25 cents. Then it goes to 30 cents. Do you see what I'm saying? It, it, it just doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. And he's flipping out at this point because he had 10 grand in it at five cents. Do you see what I'm saying? He's going crazy. He doesn't want to talk to me. I'm calling him. He's not picking up. He doesn't answer my text messages. I'm like, bro, I sent him the meme of the dude in the cave looking for diamonds. And it's like two dudes. And the one on top is like, that's me right there. I'm just like, oh, I'm going to get these diamonds, mother sucker. And I'm going through to get the diamonds. And he's at the bottom. And he gets to the like right there at the diamond and turns around. That was him. And I sent him that meme. And that probably made him mad. <laughs> but I don't care. So, yeah. So he's so pissed. He's so upset. He's so mad. And he finally calms down a few days later. He calls me back. And he's like, he's like, bro. Oh, he says, bro. And he's like, bro. That was a learning lesson. That was my learning lesson. Not to try to scalp. Not to try to uh, uh, buy low, sell high. Not to try to jump in and out. Not to double dutch the doge. That was my lesson. So what did he do? He bought, every, he bought all. He went all the way back in. He went all in on doge at about 20 cents, 25 cents. And he's good now. You know what I mean? He's good now. But he had to go through that. Do you see what I'm saying? I went through that in 2019. I went through that one with, with Tesla. I should I should have made way more money on Tesla. I was trying to play the game. I was trying to double dutch. I was like, oh, let me buy a little. Oh, let me sell it. Oh, I didn't have any patience. The name of the game is patience. The name of the game is hold. The name of the game is diamond hands because that's the only way you make money. The only way you guaranteed to make money. Can you make money scalping? Maybe. Can you make money day trading? Maybe. Like you can probably, you know, get some good ones and make some good money but it's not guaranteed though you're gonna have l's you're gonna take losses you know what is guaranteed you holding on to the doge for at least a year for six months and come back you know what we like to say in the dogecoin community if you're not a part of it you know what we like to say we like to say when in doubt zoom out what's it at today i just i just lost 250 lost i'm down two hundred and fifty thousand dollars let me zoom out a little bit. Oh, okay. Let me zoom out a little bit more. Oh, okay. Let me zoom out all the way. I'm still up crazy. And I'm sure if you bought it around the time that I bought it, you're still up crazy. Even if you bought it at 10 cents, you bought it at 15 cents. But guess what? It takes patience. You got to hold. You got to hodl. You got to hodl full throttle. You got to hold. Hold is all I know. Like, like all these things are fun to joke about and, and, and talk about and just, you know what I mean? And that's how I stomach the drops because... Whatever happens in the temporary doesn't matter. Whatever happens today, it could go down a million. It doesn't matter because what I'm looking at is a year. When I go into a stock or when I go into a coin, I'm looking two to five years in advance, two to five years into the future. When I looked into Tesla, I was buying in at Tesla, but I thought it was the future. Do you see what I'm saying? When I buy into Doge, I think it's the future. So I'm looking at it from what's going to happen two years from today. What's going to happen five years from today? I think this is the future. So what happens tomorrow doesn't matter. What happens next week doesn't matter. That's why I think it's so funny when people hit me and they're like, are you still holding? Are you still diamond handing? When, when should we sell? When should we sell? You don't sell. You don't sell because you want to win. And the only way you're guaranteed to win in the game of crypto is to hold. In the game of Doge is to hold you have to hold that's it so i know this video was super long-winded but i had to make my point clear cautionary tale number one jumping in and out of stocks not making a bunch of money not making as much money as i should cautionary number two trying to scalp trying to buy low sell high oh you know people tell me they're like pro if you sold when it was 75 cents <laughs> if you sold at 75 cents and then just bought back at the dip at 40 cents you would have made so much who knows what's gonna happen it could have gone from 75 cents to a dollar and never looked back i don't know that the dip could have only been for like a split second i don't know that you don't know that but what we do know is the longer we hold the better our chances of gains and 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 not just the better the chances of gains it's you're gonna have gains so if you wait a year if you wait to just have patience 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 is the name of the game cautionary tale number three not having patience my friend sold at seven cents and bought in at five cents did he make a profit yes 
Does he wish he had made a hundred grand instead of 10,000? Yes, but he didn't have patience. He wavered. He paper handed like a little paper handed pansy, but I still love him though. He learned his lesson and I hope these cautionary tales will help you learn your lesson if you decided to scalp, if you decided to sell high and buy low and, and try to time the market and try to figure out all oh, oh, the Fibonacci, what the fuck? Okay, maybe there is some math to that that I don't know. And maybe people that chart graphs do know what they're talking about. It looks like a bunch of lines to me and it looks like somebody had a field day with some crayons on a piece of paper, okay? I'm sorry, I just don't have the time to read into the, 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 the graphs and try to understand and study the graphs. But what I do know is hold, and hold is all I know. All right, guys, here we are up to the minute on my doja dojis. Uh, in the past hour, we're up $78,000. Today, we're down $319,000 today. Uh, this past week, we're down $416,000. Past month, $329,000, $330,000. Uh, the past three months, over a million. Uh, past year, over a million. All time, over a million. Uh, let's hit up the doji doji. Just see what we're going. Oh, look at that dip. Oh, down to 25 cents. Oh, I'm sure some of you guys paper handed, didn't you? Don't lie. Don't lie. I know some of y'all paper handed, but it's all good, though. I don't judge you. You probably still got your training wheels on. Um, right now it's at 32 cents. Let's look at my position. Uh, 3.9 million doji dojis. My equity is 1.2 million. Average cost base is 0 0.047. And my total return is over a million dollars. So there you have it, folks. Uh, yeah, that's what my portfolio looks like right now. If you guys have any questions, hit me up, find me on Instagram, shoot me a DM. Like I said, I try to get back to every single one of you guys. I got to get better at, at, com at commenting on the YouTube comments too and replying to people. I was doing really good at first, but I got to pick one. I got to pick a platform where I respond to you guys as much as I possibly can. And as of this moment in time, that platform is Instagram. Another video is going to be coming soon about merchandise, about all types of things, man. I got so many things to talk about, but right now, this second, especially where, where Doge is at right now, I feel like this video is important for you guys to really listen to what I'm saying and understand that these cautionary tales are real and they teach you to hold. I had to get my training wheels off so I could hold. And maybe you guys are going through the training wheels right now, but at the end of the day, you don't want to double dutch the Doge. Just hold. Oh, yeah. Okay. Y'all almost got me there. But guess what? I'm not a financial advisor. And guess what else? This is not financial advice. Do not put more money in than you can afford to lose. Invest at your own risk. Make sure you like, subscribe, share this video and all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Okay. Now. Chicka -poo, chicka -poo.